So my name is Anna Bryson and I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to give a lecture tonight at the Department of Justice and Equality on the late Thecla June Beer. Um, I had the opportunity of writing a biography of Thecla um, some years ago and I suppose I became more and more interested in her life and times as I researched um, my way through her papers that were held at the Institute of Public Administration. Um, Thecla's name has gradually faded from public consciousness in the years since her death, but those who are familiar with her probably associate her with two things really. Firstly, she was the first woman to be appointed um, a secretary of a government department. So she was appointed secretary of de the Department of Transport and Power in 1959. And then uh, others would associate her with the Commission on the Status of Woman, which she so ably chaired in her retirement in the uh, early 1970s. But I suppose as you kind of work your way back through her career, what really strikes you is that it was no easy path to the top. She was amongst that very first generation of women to attend university, um, and her career is really marked by a whole series of firsts. She started out in very bleak times. Um, she entered the labour market, albeit with a first-class honours degree from Trinity College. She was seeking a job in the immediate aftermath of the Civil War, a time of widespread unemployment and political instability. And she considered herself really lucky at that point to secure a position on one of the very lowest rungs on the civil service uh, ladder. Um, she had no entitlement to sick leave, to pensions, uh, anything like that, and described it later as a very, very lowly form of life. Even later on, as she moved on, she had to um, supplement her income by taking a second job teaching in Trinity, by uh, writing freelance, and all of that because behind the scenes she was caring for her invalid mother uh, and so forth. So I suppose I was able to begin to kind of colour in a little bit of both um, the career path that she followed, all of those glass ceilings that she shattered, and together with that to shade in some of the detail of her life. And indeed, you know, nothing could be further from the stereotype of a kind of a spinsterish woman with a hair and a bun and a stern expression. She was a sparkling hostess. She was a founding member of an OIGA. She loved to travel. She loved to dance. Um, she had an interest in art. And people used to say that her, um, you know, the parties she had in her house, uh, you just went to them with such trepidation because she loved to bring together a real eclectic mixture of people, academics, artists, and young people as well. I think one of the other things that really inspired me about her was that she didn't pull the ladder up behind her. And a number of people would have emphasised that to me. Um, you know, Former President Mary McAleese would say one thing about Sekla was she was so affirming. She really tried wherever she could to kind of help others, in particular to help other women, um, you know, to kind of follow in her footsteps and achieve the kind of success that she had achieved. Um, so I suppose in, in the course of tonight's lecture, I'll talk about all of that. I'll delve into, you know, aspects of, of Thecla's own brand of feminism, which I think is also of some interest and entirely fitting in terms of the broader context of tonight's event, which is, of course, marking 100 years um, since the Sex Disqualification Act and the entry of women into the civil service. And I think it's interesting to look back at Thecla's contribution, which, although subtle and understated as was her style, was, I think, by any historical yardstick, substantial. So I'm delighted to have that opportunity tonight to um, to kind of put a little bit of flesh uh, and detail on the points that I've raised uh, just now and uh, looking forward to the lecture.